So we put out a, a list of 100 good deeds that our community can do to come closer to every Jew can do. So this is number 15 on the list. This is the blessings over the Torah. So if you want to take a look on page nine, I'll share two thoughts on the, on the, on the blessings themselves. And maybe next time we'll go over some laws connected to, the, to it. <clears throat> this is the Birkota Torah. So on page nine, basically there are three blessings here. So the first blessing is, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. We make these in the morning every day. Um, it, it lasts for the whole day until you go to bed in the night. And you wake up the next day, you make them again. So this is for learning any parts of the Torah. So the first blessing is, blessed are you, God, who has commanded us to engage in study of the words of Torah. So language is interesting. It doesn't say who commanded us to learn Torah. It says la sok. I don't know what an esek is. What's an esek in Hebrew? Business, right? So you're supposed to engage in learning. You know, it's, uh, a lot of students uh, in yeshiva, they get, they're let down because they can't get to the depth of what the Rebbe's teaching or what they're learning. But really this, this language here teaches you that any engagement whatsoever with Torah is beneficial. If you understand it, if you didn't even learn it, you didn't understand it, you were engaged. There's a mitzvah in that. That's why the language is unique. La sok b'divrei Torah. That's the first a thought on the first a thirst first, first, first bracha. The second bracha is kind of continuation of that. Um, it says, "Please, Lord our God, make the words of Torah sweet in our mouths and the mouths of your people, house of Israel, so that we and our descendants and the descendants of your people, the house of Israel, may all know your name, study your Torah for its own sake. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to His people, Israel." So the idea I want to talk about here is that it says, "Make your words of Torah sweet in our mouths." And the mouths of your people. So the, I wrote about this in my book. Is a famous introduction to the this uh, book called the Igle Tal, the Sukkot Rebbe, where he says that um, there's a mistake that people have, and they think that the highest level of learning is that you don't have personal benefit from it, you don't enjoy it. Rather, you do it only for the sake of learning or for Hashem, because that's a mistake. He said the highest level of learning is that you you feel you enjoy it, like you, you're happy learning. And you should strive to find parts of Torah that make you happy. And so he has a whole piece on this. But I think the language here is hinting to that. And this idea, make it sweet in our mouths. Torah is not supposed to only be something you're working hard or engaged in. It's just to be happy when you're doing it. And the last one talks about, and this, my rabbi used to mention this a lot. This is like a lot of the Dere Torah. And like when I first came to Yeshua was around this, this bracha. So the last bracha is this. Blessed are you, Lord our God. This might sound familiar. For when you come up to the Torah, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all the people and given us this Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, uh, giver of the Torah. So, Rav Tzuda Cook and my rabbis in um, like following following his teaching used to highlight the fact that the language here is unique. It talks about God choosing us, then giving us the Torah, and they used to say it's a mistake. A, a very big mistake that people think that they can only talk to people who are religious like them. That's not what the bracha says here. The bracha doesn't say that God gave us the Torah, therefore he chose us. It's the opposite. God chose us first. God wanted to be close to us. Every Jew is unique and special because they were chosen. And God gave us the Torah afterwards. But the order is that God, we are chosen, even if you're religious or not religious, or you're doing the Torah, you're living, you learn, doesn't matter. We are always chosen. It's, it's not contingent upon your acceptance of the Torah. The more you learn, the better. But they're very careful to teach this in yeshiva because in Israel, there's a lot, those who have been in Israel, they, there's like a lot of um, tension between the religious and the non-religious and the, and people go to the army, don't go to the army. But from the same, from, he, he was teaching, they were teaching us as religious Jews, you should not fall into that. You should know that whether someone's religious or not religious, they're from or not, from, they, they study Torah or not, everybody's chosen, everybody's beloved, loved by God. And God gave us the Torah as well to make it to like to help us become the best versions of ourselves. But the first thing is that God chose us and then God gave us the Torah. So those are three thoughts to think about the idea that we engage in Torah, that even if you don't completely understand what you're learning, there's value in being engaged in it. Number two is uh, that it's not only about finding things to, to learn that are difficult. You have to find things that you love. If you love them, you'll be connected to. It. And the last one is speaking about love. You should love all Jews, no matter if they're religious or not religious, because the blessing says, God chose us and then gave us the term.